So um, the inspiration behind the 0161 project was growing up as a kid. I, I, I've grew up in this gym, and um, obviously just doing boxing. So a lot of my uh, school days, uh, I have a wagged it or just didn't do it. So um, the older you get, you realise that you need your education and stuff like that. So my inspiration was to have it all under one roof, bit of education as well as the positive role models that this gym provides without them even knowing that they're positive role models and um, just the whole environment of the gym, just the whole setting of the gym and how how uh, how the gym makes some people put some people feel and um yeah I knew I just I just had a feeling that it it, it, it would work. Hundred percent like Isaac when I was when I was twenty nine I retired from boxing and I had to start all over again when I realised that I, I you know, I needed my education, I needed to, you need education for everything, your maths, your English, um, sending emails, doing stuff like that, I just, I was, it was all brand new to me, and it was quite, um, quite a worrying time really, where I thought, wow, I don't actually know what to do in certain um, situations, and I thought, I'm not, I've not, you know, I've never, I've, I've, I've retired from boxing, but what am I going to do now, I'm not even further, so... If I if I had my boxing as well as my education, I'd be uh, I'd be a lot better. I'd be doing I do okay now, but I think I'd be doing a lot better in life. Um, and that's what I wanted to sort of like tell all these young up and coming kids who who have who have dreams of being a millionaire boxer. Yeah, it's all right, you know, earning a million quid, but can you keep hold of it? Um, are you smart enough to invest? Are you smart enough to? spend it, are you smart enough to, to spend it wisely, so um, that, you know, I, I grew up around a lot of fighters who earn a lot of money, and a lot of them have not been able to keep hold of it, so um, if I had to have it when I was a kid, if I had to have something like this when I was a kid, it would have been a dream come true, so um, that's why I wanted to do it. So when I first started it, um, I just, I, I knew that I could take off, I got, I got, um, I wanted to give, I, I was sick of also seeing like, boxers, ex-boxers, who was doing nothing with themselves, and, you know, at a loose end, and I thought, I want to get some of the ex-boxers, and I want to get some of my ex-boxers, up and coming boxers, um, involved in doing something throughout the day, uh, with kids, where they feel, where they feel like you know they're needed, and where they feel like their expertise is respected. Because, because, some, some, some of the fighters they end up doing jobs that they don't want to do. Um, and I thought I can offer this. I know I can. Some of these up and coming fighters who need, who need to be in the gym a lot. Otherwise, they're gonna have to go and get a job. If they go and get a job, then it's gonna take it away from their training. Does that makes sense. So I was thought. I can kill two birds with one stone, I can get some of my up and coming kids, mentors who are, who are who could be good fighters but also who could be on the verge of um, getting themselves in trouble. I thought I can offer them a job, I can kill two birds with one stone, so I'll give my mentors a job who can also help the kids. Um, and that's it, that was a dream that I've got and that's a dream that I, I'm still, I'm, I'm halfway there for what I've got to do, there's a few other things that I want to do, um, I want to get more professional ex-professionals doing one-to-ones with kids and mentoring kids and teaching what they've been taught so um, in terms of where do they see this going I see it I see it right, right, right about now it's going really really well but I can see it getting a, a little bit bigger if, uh, if I had my way there's a couple of units we've got we're running now from four or five units so the, 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 the fifth units office offices um, but the four units we're running from, so the gym is obviously where we get some of the hardcore kids who come in once, twice a week um, to do some written work with us, so, so, so it's like an incentive for them, so hopefully when they come here the, the behaviour improves, otherwise the schools won't let them come. So it's a hook to get the kids in, if the kids like it here then 
the ideal scenario is that they, they, um, they behave at school. So they come in, and like today's been mental health, um, mental health thing. So we've just been doing a lot on, on mental health, chatting, bit of debating, some written work in the classroom. And then it'll be a case of something on, and then some boxing, and send them on the way. So they're doing written work, they're getting into the routine of coming. They all love coming. They don't miss days. All the kids come in. So, and some sometimes we get told that some of these kids are, you know, oh, he's a bit of a he's a bit of a handful. And we've not had any love up with any kid because, as I knew, school's not school's not school wasn't for me. School's not for everyone. So this is like a, but you still at the same time kids still need kids and adults still need routines. So it's getting them in for a certain time, getting them in for half past nine. Just sit down, have a chat with them, get them to do some kind of written work. Um, dinner, exercise, boxing, mentoring, talking to positive role models, um, seeing likes of Lyndon Zelf, Lyndon uh, Arthur and Zelfa Barrett walking about here who are champion boxers and just chatting to them and, and some of the up and coming kids like George and Niall and stuff like that. So uh, that's one string to our bow. Um, the other two centres, um, one in Failsworth, one in the, at the youth so Manchester youth so we, um, we do quite similar. But in group sessions, so we'll have groups. So we'll have a, a group, a group of the same school. So, for instance, in here now we've got say eight kids, but they're all from different schools and different backgrounds, which can be quite challenging because all these post-cold wars and all these kids not getting on with each other and messing each other on Snapchat. So this is this is where the we we, we have to really keep keep our eye um, eye on what's going on. And monitor the kids and get referral forms and stuff like that. Where we get referral forms for the other venues that we work at, but it's majority like a school will send five or six kids, and we do the same thing. We um, we work on knife crime, um, bullying, uh, county lines, all all subjects like that, and we just have them. So a school will just send five or six kids one day a week. So that's how them two go. Them two uh, units go, and the other one down in Monsal, our other unit in Monsal is a post 16. And then um, hopefully, they're able to have them with us two, three days a week, and then getting them into going to work. Because I remember leaving school at 16 and thinking, right, what am I going to do now? Obviously, I'm going to the gym, but at the same time, I think I'm not going to college. I'm not clever enough. But at the same time, like, I don't want to go. Um, and you saw, like, left to your own devices. Like my mum and dad was, used to make me come to the gyms, even though I watched them to the gym, but you just like, that was my, that was my thing that I was going to do. And my dad, my mum and dad wanted to me, you know, lay in bed and, and uh, being lazy. Uh, they wanted me to get out, get up out of bed and do something positive, so I had the gym. Whereas a lot of these kids, they find themselves when they leave school at 16, they don't want to go to college, they've not got a job. They can't get a job because they're not old enough. They can't get a job because they've got no experience. They can't get experience because they won't give them a job. So they're in, they're in no man's land. So um, we've got our post 16 down there, which hopefully we we um, get them in a couple of days a week and then say, right, what do you want to do? And they say mechanics. We we'll try and get them a placement. They say electrician. They say mentor. Some of them want to be mentors like what we are. So we just train them up and then that's the aim to... And then also top up on their maths and English, what they've obviously not done at school. So, and a lot of the time it's just getting some of these kids who have got a bit of anxiety, a bit of ADHD, a couple of um, problems going on. And we just try and um, be there for them and help them and, and see what they want to do. You know, I was lucky enough to find the boxing gym. And that's something that I wanted to do. But some of these kids, if they don't try certain certain like job roles they're never going to know if they like it or not so it's just an opportunity for them so the four sites are going really really well um got all local people and um, girls and and, and and guys um so it's going really well going really well it's great when you see get a kid that's like i can't really mention a couple of names but you get like a couple, some of the kids who just slot in straight away we've got a girl who's come in She's doing all the work. She's topping up. She had a bit of, bit of a, uh, bit of a bad couple of years, but she's she's loving the hair and beauty. She's loving the boxing. She's coming to the gym of a night time, and it's just great to see her. Just without all that, it's just great to see her just being happy and just actually not missing a day, coming every day, 
um, and just really, just like I say, just being happy. Um, I know there's, you know, there's, there's certain, there's certain, um, there's different ty types of kids who we work with. Some of them we try to keep off the street. Um, we don't want them on the street, so it's good when they, when they're turning up and, and and they're going. You know, they're not they're not knocking about later on at night, and and the, and our, our provision is actually our, our provision is actually a reason for them to go in of a night time. So we've got that side of the side side of things, but we've also got like like I say, seeing kids just being happy. You know, you hear when you you know you sometimes you read some of the referral forms and you think it's just how how sometimes how they feel in their head. A lot of the time they're having arguments with their own. You know, they've got a couple of problems with you know with anxiety and they're beating themselves up about about mad stuff. So coming in and doing something positive. It just benefits them. It just makes them feel better about themselves. So that's the best thing about it. The best thing about it is just is just seeing kids being happy. If I'm totally honest with you, we don't get paid for kids to be happy, but if that makes sense, because people, you know, you know, the powers that be, they, they want they want um, they want results, they want education. But for me, it's seeing kids happy and having a routine and having a purpose and having ambition and, and whether they want to be a rapper. And they give it a go and they realise, you know what, I'm not good enough. It's giving them opportunities. So that's the best thing for me, mate. The next aim that I want to do, I want to do something like when I was a kid, um, I remember Robbie Reed used to, he was coming in, he used to train, and, and Robbie Reed's that world champion and he, should, he, he got an Olympic medal, world champion. He should drop me off at school. You know, sometimes, like, just drop me off. And I remember just thinking, and those people go, how oh, do you know him? Like, yeah, my mate and that. I'll, I'll be about 14, 15. And the same way, like, Pat. And Pat was, like, European champion and stuff like that. And just being about with him and being in the car with him. And just, you know, the, 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 what people thought of them and I was their mate. And, you know, it it, it, it done me good. Like, like it, you know, it, it was, um, it made me feel good to have them as my friends kind of thing. And then, um, and like I say, even as as when I was fourteen, fifteen, they be, they be grown men, and we've still maintained our friendship now. But my aim is to get some of these kids who are into boxing. I want to get them someone like Lyndon Arthur, Zelfa Barrett. Uh, imagine them picking a kid up from school, not from school, picking a kid up from his house, taking him for a drive, taking him to a teacher who will teach him a bit of maths and English or a bit of education for an hour, then taking them to, uh, for some food, then taking them to do some boxing or the library or wherever these kids want to do. Imagine having someone like that picking you up and, and getting to spend two or three days with them. And then, and then, and then I think that'd be great for, first of all, I think that'd be great for you know, not Lyndon and Zelfa now because they're still active fighters, but I'm using them as, as, as just names. But imagine having Xboxes like that, working with kids. You're benefiting the kid and you're benefiting the boxer, the Xboxer. You're giving him a purpose because he feels like he's a role model. Well, he is a role model. And the kid's got a purpose because the kid might know him. And the kid, the kid will look up to that person and listen to that person. So... That's something that um, I'm just throwing it out there. Don't get me wrong; it needs smartening up that 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 package. And um, you know, in terms of every 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 role, every mentor would need a DBS, would need a safeguarding, would need a first aid, would need all that kind of stuff. And um, but that's something that I want to do on a one to one because I remember that helping me. I remember like not wanting to do certain stuff, and then my dad just ringing Pat, Pat come to see me, or. Robbie pulling me to one side and saying, no, you don't do this, you do that. And you're just having that trust in someone to guide you on the right path. So that's where, I, that's that's the, I want to just deal with the here and the now, but down the line, that's the aim, is to get in, like if you George Colleen, who's an up and coming pro, he could be working with some of my, some of these kids who want, you know, to sort of like, who, who are not getting on at school, who were not doing well at school, because George, I remember going to see George at uh, St. Matthews, he got kicked out. Mm. I went into the school to see, to see him. 
And um, and he listened to me because I told him what he shouldn't do at school, how he's got to behave. He did. And look at him now, he's doing really well. He, he went to college, done, he's an electrician, he's a qualified electrician, he's a pro fighter. He's, he's living the dream, as they say. Do you know what I mean? And, and I'd like to take a little bit of credit for that because at one point he just listened to me and he's shown a bit of belief in what I said. And um, I think I think that's a powerful thing that the boxers have got. I think, I think that's a powerful thing that the boxers, boxers ex-boxers have got. And um, if they can pass it on to some of the young people, who you know what can happen.